Welcome to part 13 of this series where I talk about a specific family branch of mine and let you in on what I've been able to find about them, what I haven't been able to find about them, and how the tactics and strategies for this specific line differ from all the other ones that I've done. Now, I just want to thank you all for bearing with me for so long. So we've just reached 300 YouTube subscribers. Give yourselves a pat on the back. And also, if you haven't liked this video or subscribed, please be sure to do that. It really helps me out with this channel. Now, on one of the previous episodes, I talked about my Kapul family from Kedanai, Lithuania, and had managed to trace back to all the way to my sixth great-grandparents uh, back in the 1700s. And this is very, very far to get back with Ashkenazi ancestry. And I was pretty certain that I wouldn't be able to get back any further. Usually by the time you get back this far, records for women are either non-existent or extremely undetailed. So figuring out the last names of the wives of your ancestors to try to trace their lines doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while you get lucky where one person is placed in proximity to another on a document and it actually helps you solve that mystery. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about my fifth great grandmother, Dobra Rosenblatt, and her family line. I'm Yona Paley, and I believe genealogy is fun. It's another deep dive into my own personal family tree. This time, we're going all the way back to the early 1700s, the furthest back I have ever gotten on any individual line. Before we begin, I just want to let you know about a website I've created that helps family researchers connect with one another. Kinsley is a social media website for genealogists. It allows you to create a page for your family, each of which has its own designated forum. The page then gets put into a searchable database so that users can find and join the groups they are interested in connecting with. The homepage contains a curated feed with all the specific groups and family members that you're a part of. That way, you'll never miss an update and you can stay tuned into the findings and notifications of your family lines. As more members and families join the site, it becomes a powerful and simple tool for keeping track of your genealogical endeavors. Sign up today completely for free at kinsleyconnect.com register. Let's get this family show on the road. Through a great deal of digging, I had discovered an 1816 census in Kedanai, Lithuania, one of the furthest I've ever been able to find and it showed my fifth great grandparents, Peretz Kapul, and his wife, Dobra, living in the household. Now, Peretz's name, his last name was misspelled with a G in the transcription, but it wasn't too difficult to find. However, his wife, Dobra, her father was listed as being named Itzko, and she was supposed to be the daughter of the head of the household which was very, very confusing because if you look at the census record, at least on the page where they are featured, the head of the household is a guy named Moshe Michla. And that was really odd because Moshe was really, really old and he had died recently. His name was not Itzko uh, and he was also seemed to be too old to be her father. So it was really confusing and there was another person who appeared to be Dobra's sister living in the household, whose father was also named Itzko. So where was this mysterious Itzko? This was around the time when I started discovering tactics that were a little bit outside the box, such as not just looking at names and ages, but also things on the documents such as page number, registration number, things like that. And I've actually done an episode on this pretty recently where I talk about using registration numbers, house numbers, things like this, to trace Jewish ancestry. And this is one such instance where this came really in handy. Because if you look at the family on the census, they are on page number 99, and the house 
and family registration number is number 10. So I at least had a number to tie them into. And what I did is I went through the rest of the census strategically and figured out that there was actually another group of people registered under number 10. They were 20 or 30 pages further on in the census, but who they were was a guy with the name of Itzko Rosenblatt. So what I did is I then looked through some other censuses and I built out all these trees and these associations and figured out, yes, Itzko Rosenblatt was Dobra's father. And in fact, he had at least four children in Kedanai. He had Dobra, Bela Gitta, Yankel, and Leib Yankel. And due to some really good record availability in Kedanai, I traced pretty much all of these branches and did a giant family report for myself on all of the descendants. It came to almost a thousand. I was, I was able to find almost a thousand descendants from just this one guy, Itzko Rosenblatt. And, um, I, I keep a document to this day with all of the names. It's, it's like 15 pages long and it by far makes up the largest chunk of my family tree. Many of these relationships were also verified with DNA, similar to with my Kapool line, and I was also able to add a ton of confirmed DNA matches to a spreadsheet that I keep with all of uh, all of my confirmed DNA matches, and it's just it was just one of the most incredible discoveries I've ever had for my family because Ashkenazi ancestry, most of the time, if you get back to the 1700s, you're very very lucky. But in this instance, I had an 1816 document that not only gave me an ancestor who is my sixth great-grandfather and my sixth great-grandmother, Basa, who's also listed in this document, but it also gave me the name of his father, which was Israel. So Israel Rosenblatt, my seventh great-grandfather. And it should just be noted, just to show you how rare something like this is in European Jewish ancestry, the average person has just over a thousand seventh great grandparents. Out of all those a thousand, I've got one of them on my family tree. That's it. And if you have one, you're pretty, pretty darn lucky. That makes up less than one tenth of one percent of your seventh great grandparents. So yeah, I'm very, very pleased that I've got that person in my tree. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. What's the furthest that you've been able to get on one of your family branches? Obviously, this is going to differ from ethnicity to ethnicity. So somebody with British ancestry will be able to get back most of the time way further than somebody with Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. Um, every single different type of genealogy poses different challenges and availability of records. With Jewish ancestry, it gets really tricky beyond the 1700s because people didn't even take on surnames until then, in most cases. Unless you're lucky to find somebody from a well-documented rabbinic line, most of the time, getting back as far as I did on my Rosenblatt family, so the early 1700s, that is like the, the maximum that you're usually going to be able to get back, and you're not even going to be able to get back that far in the majority of cases. So let me know who the furthest ancestor that you've ever found on your tree is. Also, I've included links to my Instagram and my Twitter, so also be sure to follow me on social media. And as always, I'm looking forward to bringing you more videos as well as tips and tricks that you can use in your own genealogy research. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.